Well, welcome this morning. I want to say it's the beginning of December and what a blessing it is to, to be in God's house. I've started our Christmas parties. I've had a couple of them already and got several to come and uh, they've been a good times. So I hope you'll be able to participate in your class parties. You'll note several of them in, in the bulletin. Uh, I do want to mention what next Sunday is about. Uh, next week we're going to have our two musicals, the adults in the morning, the children at night. Uh, the adults, we're doing a compilation of three older musicals, taking some of the best of those musicals, uh, plus some personal reflections from different individuals in our church uh, as they relate to Christmas. And so you hope you can be a part of that. Our children's choir will be doing Do Not Be Afraid Parade. It's always a blessing to see our kids uh, participate in that. And in relation to that, let me mention our practices. If you're in the adult choir or you have a speaking part, tonight's a very important practice as we're just a week away. So please be here ready to go at 445 here in the sanctuary. And then the adult choir will also practice on Wednesday night following prayer meetings. So please make a point of both of those. And uh, depending on both of those, we'll determine if we need to have another gathering uh, to tidy things up. But uh, that's the plan right now. And in relation to that, our children's choir, because they're going to have their dress rehearsal on Wednesday night, they will be meeting in here during prayer meeting. So if you come to prayer meeting Wednesday, we'll be in the fellowship hall just for that one week. So please keep that in mind. Also, you'll notice that we are uh, just over $1,200 from our goal. Some more came in this morning. I'm not sure what the total would have been, but uh, we're very close to reaching that goal. Isn't that great? We'll have it done by the end of the year. And so praise God that we're going to finally get to see that done with the contractor coming in, uh, hopefully the first part of the year. We're hoping that'll happen in January, uh, but with uh, supply issues, we'll have to see uh, exactly when that begins. And then Ms. Marie, you had something you wanted to say about the WMU project. Baptist Friendship House has been in New Orleans for a long time. It's still there on Elysian Fields, I guess, right there on the uh, outside of the French Quarter. So um, what a blessing to be able to participate in that. Uh, every year we collect our Lottie Moon Christmas offering, and today is the kickoff, what we call Bring Your Gifts to Jesus. And so here in a few minutes, uh, we're going to have a time where I'm going to ask you if you've prepared or you can prepare in the next few minutes uh, to bring your Lottie Moon offering. We have boxes up here. And what we're going to do after we show a video is uh, Tyler's going to play softly and I'm going to ask you to come if, if you choose to do that. Or if you say, I don't want to go to the front, can I give it just in the box? You, you certainly can. But this is just kind of a special emphasis uh, to bring your Lottie Moon Christmas offering uh, to the front. And then unlike in past years where I had you come and pray as a family, I'm just going to ask us to stand. And once everyone gets up here and has placed their gift in the box, I'm just going to lead us in prayer. Uh, that God would touch our missionaries uh, that are all over the world. Of course, we have one family in particular that we're very close to, uh, which are Eddie and Monica serving in Africa. And uh, so this goes to help undergird them and support them in, in their work of doing uh, international missions. So to kick this off, we're going to start with the video. And then immediately after the video, I would ask you to come and bring your gifts to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. For giving. For giving. Thank you for your giving. To the Lottie Moon offering. Toward Lottie Moon. Thank you for giving to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. But most importantly, due to your generosity, we've been able to share God's word with those around us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Because you gave, I am able to access remote areas of Central Asia and explain the gospel with people God is already drawing to himself. With your help, we are bringing light to the dark places among unreached people groups. Because of what you've given, it allows me to share this gospel with as many Central Asians as I can across London. Your giving allows our organization to provide need for refugees and to give them hope. Thank you for giving to the Lottie Moon Christmas Offering so that we can buy Bibles in Arabic that we use with our Discovery Bible Study with non-believers. 
Because of your generosity, African women are hearing stories from God's word while henna is being drawn on their hands and arms. And because of your giving, the life changes that we see through faith in Jesus Christ, that happens because of your gifts. giving to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering and helping to provide this wonderful water filter here in Northern Thailand. Your giving allows me to continue with my medical license here in Ghana, where I can not only do surgeries, but also the patients have the opportunity to hear the gospel. So thank you. Because of your giving, I'm able to speak to these thousand kids every Wednesday morning. Thank you. Thank you, First Baptist Church. Thank you, First Baptist Church. Thank you, Baptist Church. Thank you, Baptist Church. Thank you, Baptist Church. Thank you and God bless you. On, please. Let's pray together. Our Father, we do thank you for the privilege of giving, the privilege of going, the privilege of sending, the privilege of supporting. And Lord, I think of the roughly 4,000 missionaries that represent us and represent you and the gospel uh, that are all over the world today, uh, that God, you would take these offerings and you would expand them for the sake of meeting the needs of a world that needs to hear. I think specifically of the Landry's today. Uh, God is uh, there on the other side of the world serving, but yet came from here. Let them be encouraged today. Use this offering may help us reach the goal that we have set of 6,500, but yet the larger goal of all our churches internationally of supporting missions. So, Father, bless this and use this in Jesus' name. Amen. Together. Surely in this place, and 
we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We are the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We are the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There is joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There is joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. Amen.
from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation's story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. in the field abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with man is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Christ the newborn King. God is with us even now, His love is here. Come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. God is with us even now, His love is here. His love is here.
Christmas Day Stars we have seen Over deserts and oceans The darkness was deep But never hopeless Redemption came and his name is Jesus. Sing all you people, the Lord Almighty reigns. Sing every creature of God, come bless his name. For he is good, for he is good. 
He was born to conquer the grave. He's the light of the world and the reason for Christmas Day. From the mountains we will shout it out for the Lord our God Almighty reigns. He is with us. He is with us now, for the Lord our God Almighty reigns. From the mountains we will shout it out, for the Lord our God Almighty reigns. He is with us, He is with us now, for the Lord our God Almighty reigns. Sing all you people, the Lord Almighty reigns. Sing every creature of God, come bless his name. For he is good, for he is good. He was born to conquer the grave. He's the light of the world and the reason for Christmas. Sing all you people, the Lord Almighty reigns. Sing every creature of God, come bless his name. For he is good, for he is good. He was born to conquer the grave. The light of the world and the reason for Christmas Day. The light of the world and the reason for Christmas Day. It's good to have Tyler and the praise team back after being out a couple of weeks. Appreciate Paul filling in while they were out. And uh, we're in the middle of Christmas season, singing about Christmas Day. Today's message, I'm not going to be speaking on Christmas. We'll be getting to that as we go along. But I uh, wanted to share something with you today I just think is important during Christmas. And that is that we are sensitive to God speaking to us uh, during Christmas. Take your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to be looking at verses 17 to 24. Let's honor God's Word by standing together. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Let's pray. God, help us to be a sensitive people. Lord, when we sing the carols, let us see Jesus. God, uh, as we do all the things of this month, let us be a spiritually sensitive people that know what it's about, uh, that we are not taking off into the, the pictures and the programs of a, a world's idea, uh, but that we're a people who are connected to God's idea about everything. And Lord, in a world where the definitions are changing, let us be sensitive to truth. And God, in a world that says there's many ways to heaven, let us be understanding there's only one way through Jesus. Uh, today, open our hearts and our minds to the sensitivity uh, that you want us all to have in Jesus' name. Amen. The end of last January, I was one of the fortunate people to catch COVID. Some of you have caught it. I didn't have a bad case of it. Uh, no major fever. I don't think I ever broke 100. Um, had a few headaches, a little bit of fatigue. My breathing was never a problem. But the day that I tested positive, I could smell everything and taste everything. But about two days later, I couldn't taste anything or smell anything. And let me tell you, it's been almost a year, and I haven't gotten it back. 
I got it back some. I can taste some things and smell some things, but it's not like it used to be. And so, you know, I've tried a lot of things. So what I would do to kind of test my smell is I would take candles and put them right here and sniff and smell nothing. You ever done that if you had it? I just trying to inhale this, I couldn't get it. And Judy brought some essential oils one day to the office. She said, put it under your nose. If you can't smell this, you can't smell. And I went, nothing. I mean, we're talking, it was gone there for a long time. And, and then it gradually kind of has, has come back and it's hit and miss. It's on and off. I'll tell you how bad it has gotten. I have to have Tam at least smell the milk to make sure it's not sour before I drink it. I'm not lying. I mean, I look at the date on the milk and I'm thinking, it's close. And there's half a gallon left. Would you please smell the milk to tell me if it is okay? And so the taste has come back some, smell has come back some. Some meals I can taste, some meals I don't. I think it's different tastes, different smells, uh, but it, it is gradually coming back. So if you want to say to me, Brother Steve, at one of these parties, what'd you think of my dish? Don't ask me. Okay, just don't ask. I'm going to say it was great, even if I could taste it or, or I couldn't, because that's the proper answer. Because I'm telling you, it was, it was quite, a, quite a deal. So think about it. As, as human beings, we have five senses. We have sight, taste, hearing, smell, and touch. And so for the last nearly year now, two of my five senses have not been operating effectively. Does that change how you deal with, with life? Sure it does. Uh, because those things are very Im important. I thank God I didn't lose my sight because that's probably the most important sense because of mobility and, and driving and such. And I thank God that I could hear because it, it really affects me dealing with what I do and talking with people and listening. And then I can touch. But losing your taste and your smell is a big deal. You know, I used to talk to people years ago. If you had to lose a sense, which one would you want to lose? I like tasting things, folks. I really do. It's just, it brings pleasure to life. But think about it. Those five things are senses. I have lost my sensitivity. The ability to understand taste and smell have changed. But I think I'd go ahead and say this as well. I think since COVID has hit, we have a world that has lost its sensitivity too. We, we have a world that has lost its ability to sense right and wrong in a way that maybe before was, was more understood. The sense has changed. Would you turn this off? I'm going to go strictly with the lapel mic. Okay. And, and so when we think about that, um, people lost their taste and smell during COVID, but a lot of people have lost their sensitivity to our world in the day in which we live in. And so what does that mean? Well, we sing carols at Christmas. Tyler just sang a beautiful song at Christmas. And there's a lot of people that will not get what that means. People see nativity scenes but don't understand what that really means. People say Merry Christmas but don't understand what that really means. In fact, you can celebrate Christmas and not sense what it is all about. To put it another way, listen to me, this is an important illustration. A lot of people put Christmas in their mouth, but they can't taste it. A lot of people put Christmas in their smell, but can't smell it. And that's what happens when you live in the world that loses spiritual sensitivity. I want to speak today on the subject in pursuit of spiritual sensitivity. And we're just going to look at a few things about how to have that become more defined in your life as well as how to have in your, in your own life the ability to discern things. So we're going to look at what Paul says in Ephesians 4. He is speaking to a pagan people who were having to have sensitivity between the pagan world and this new Christian faith that they had recently received. So let's look at four things today. Number one, to be spiritually sensitive, you must forsake your past life. Sin takes away your sense of knowing right and wrong. Think about it. The more you sin in your life, you can't determine right and wrong because you get no, dulled by it. You get numb to it. You stop hearing God. Think about it. You can get to the point where you can't hear God. You can't taste God. You can't smell God. Your sensitivity to God totally gets diminished. I, I know some of you in this room um, have had eye issues. Lots of you have had eye surgeries. And 
Some of you have had cataract surgery. I've heard people say this, and my mom told me this when she had her cataract surgery. She said, Steve, I didn't realize how much I couldn't see till I got my eyes fixed. And I, I think that's probably true for a lot of people. You get those, those cataracts taken off and you go, wow, this world is surely bright. I remember her telling me this when she had this. She was still back in, in Chalmette. And she said, Steve, I did not realize the bathroom tile in the bathroom had specks of gold in it until I got my eyes fixed. I, thought, I didn't even know they were there. And you know, there's things you see that you didn't see until you get your eyes fixed. And the same th thing is true spiritually, that you become spiritually insensitive if you hang on to your past life. Because here's what you're trying to do. You're mixing the flavors of a world that were never meant to be mixed. Give me, for instance, Miss Lucy's going to make us gumbo for our Minister Alliance this coming Tuesday. We always look forward to that. And she might make carrot cake. You can't come. You're not a pastor. Sorry. Um, but we're going to have that on Tuesday. And you know what? I, I, Ms. Lucy, I love your gumbo. And I love your carrot cake. But you know what I've never done? I've never dipped her carrot cake in her gumbo. I've never done it. Now, let's think about it. Her, her gumbo's great. Her carrot cake is great. Were they meant to be dipped in one another? I, I totally separate them. I mean, I, I think that cream cheese icing with gumbo roux, oh, that tastes good, doesn't it? Listen to me. The only way that tastes good is if you can't taste. You see, you have to lose your taste to mix two totally different flavors that were never meant to be put together. And if you are spiritually insensitive and you keep the flavors of your past and try and mix them with the new flavors of your life, you won't notice the fact they're not supposed to be together. God calls us to be spiritually sensitive by discerning and separating the distinctions. Look at verse 17 of our text. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of of their thinking. Futility of their thinking. So what is he saying here? This is still on, just the pulpit mic. And, and so think about that. He's saying, insist on this, that you no longer live as the, the Gentiles do. These are former pagans who he was saying, look, you, you can't live in the paganism of your past. You have to live in the godliness of the new life. You can't just Christianize what you are. You have to change who you are. It's an old saying. You've heard it before. If you put lipstick on a pig, it's what? It's still a pig. And if you try and Christianize your paganism, what is it still? It's still paganism. You, you cannot have both worlds and walk with God. There has to be a spiritual sensitivity. What about Christianity? Can you water down Christianity and it still be Christianity? Well, no. Let's think about it this way. Some of you like Coke, Coca-Cola. Some of you like Diet Coke. Is there Christianity and Diet Christianity? Christianity light? Christianity locale? No, no, no. God doesn't just say, look, I, I want to give you a locale Christianity. I want you to have the whole thing. You, just like you're saying to the Ephesians here. You've got to have a changed life. Verse 18, they are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Darkened and hardened. Darkened means you can't see. Hardened means you can't feel. Losing the ability to have spiritual senses. Uh, there was a young lady in a previous church we served in. Uh, she had some things going on in her life that she was doing publicly that I found out she shouldn't be doing. And yet she was uh, singing solos in the church. So I went to her and I said, look, um, you can't sing solos anymore if you're going to stay in this lifestyle because you're, you're leading worship in the church. You can come to church. You can come every time the doors are open, but I can't have you leading in elements of worship if you're doing this w without a sense of remorse or doing this uh, without uh, leaving the lifestyle. So she understood. She stayed in the church. And then um, she took care of the situation that was in her life. 
And she stayed in, and praise God, she got things worked out. And, uh, she ended up um, getting married. She ended up coming back later and saying, you know what? I never was saved to begin with. I, I remember this. I actually did her wedding and baptized her the same day. She came to me on a, uh, a few days before and said, Brother Steve, can we do a, a wedding at the church on a Sunday morning at 8 o'clock? I said, great. And she said, can we be baptized the same day? So I actually baptized her and her new husband the same day that they got married. I thought, what a wonderful, wonderful thing. And the reason that's so important is she said, my eyes were open to what I was not. And guess what happened? She went back to singing. She went back into the choir. As far as I know, she, she, had, she had gotten out of that church into another church, but is back there even now attending. What, what does that say to us? When you lose your smell and you get it back, it changes the way you perceive the odor of this world. To be spiritually sensitive, you've got to say no to the old life. Look at verse 19. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. They lost all sensitivity. And as a result, they dove into the sensuality of their world and they wanted more and more. What does that mean to us in 2021? As we have Christmas, as we, we live in a world that has so much pain and problems, there is only the peace of God in the presence of God when you feel God because you're right with God. Paul understood for the Ephesians who lived in a hotbed of paganism where the, 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 the church of Artemis, so to speak, the temple of Artemis was located, that there was a battle between what do we want to be that he says, Leave what you were uh, to be what you, you need to be. Look at the second thing. To be spiritually sensitive, you must embrace your new life. You have to leave the old life. You've got to embrace the new life. I, I remember 1976, the first Rocky movie came out. Remember that? 1976, the year of the, the um, bicentennial, and Rocky came out. It was a tremendous movie. I loved the theme song to Rocky. I remember our band in high school, and in junior high, played the Rocky theme, Gonna Fly Now. And I saw that movie, and it got the best picture, the Academy Award, uh, that year. And you might remember the story of the Rocky movie of Sylvester Stallone. And he's a guy that grew up on the streets of Philadelphia, and he was basically an arm breaker for the local syndicate there. And, but he became a boxer, and a thing worked out where he's going to get to box the champion of the world, kind of as a, a David and Goliath kind of publicity stunt. And, and so as he's dealing with this, his life's disjointed, and finally he gets somebody who believes in him as his trainer, and, and he, he starts running and, and working out, and he starts punching sides of beef in the, the local butcher shop, and uh, he, he's getting ready, and he, he's getting rid of things in his life he doesn't need, and he's taking on the things he does need. And remember the movie at the end, it, it's a split decision, and he loses, but he, he won the fight in his own mind, because he set himself aside to let go of what he used to be, to be what he needed to be. Fast forward to the, the third Rocky movie. That came out in 1982. And Rocky is the champ. In the second movie, he wins. In the third movie, he's got all the glamour and the luxury and the wealth and the fame. And this guy who's hungry to win fights him. You might remember Mr. T in that movie, Clubber Lang. And so Rocky doesn't take it seriously. He's lost his drive. He's been consumed with his money and his fame, but he lost what it meant to be the champion. And the whole theme of that movie, and if you might remember, is he lost the eye of the tiger. Remember that? He lost the eye of the tiger. And finally, after, after coming to grips with the fact that he had to change his thinking, he works out and he separates himself from his mindset of luxury. And he gets back to working out and he wins the battle. He had gotten off track gotten off track. So I want you to think about this in your own life. Some of you are at Rocky One in your life. It's time to clean some things out. Why is that? Because if you're going to win, some things need to be set aside and God needs to be first. But some of you find yourself at Rocky Three. You've, you've known God and you walked with God, but you've gotten lax. Lost sensitivity to what you're supposed to be. In Ephesians 
Paul writes, you, however, did not come to know Christ that way. He's saying that these other people were into paganism and, and the, their thinking and their minds. They were living in these formal ways. But you haven't come to know Christ this way. You're different. You need to embrace the newness. As we have Christmas this year, folks, there's a lot of people who need Jesus. They not only need him in their hearts, they need him from you. A person with a positive outlook and a positive attitude who celebrates Christ, not just the, the trim of the tree and the lights on the house and the presence and the fanfare, but has had a, a different life. He's saying, you didn't just come to know Christ this way. In verse 22, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. He said you were taught to put things off. You were taught to change the attitude of your mind and to be righteous before God. Where are you today? Where are you when it comes to the old self and the new self? He says our goal is to be created like God in true righteousness and holiness. It, it's hard to see distinctions today like we, we did, I guess, when, when I was coming up. I remember the year it was 1981. Some of you might can go back that far, 40 years ago. In 1981, a, a social phenomenon hit the television. It was called MTV. I remember MTV? And, you know, it was all videos driven, and I remember watching Michael Jackson do Thriller and um, all those other ones, and it was kind of interesting to watch. And, and so that's back in the day of cassette tapes. Now, there were some things on MTV I shouldn't have watched, and uh, a lot of it was musically in involved, and it was creative with videos and audios. But you think about it, 40 years later, compared to MTV, that's incredibly mild, isn't it? Incredibly mild. So back then it's like there's some videos I shouldn't watch, there's some I should, but today it's 24-7 audio, visual, sound entering the minds of another generation. And, and so when Paul is talking about in regard to your formal way of life, there's things you need to put off. And then there's things you need to be made new in. God calls us to be spiritually sensitive. Are you sensitive? Let me ask you this. Are there things in your life today that you turn off? Do you ever see something on television or listen to something on the internet and you say, that does not deserve to be put in my mind? And you turn it off. Do you do that? Do you ever turn things off? And do you ever turn things on? God, I need to be fed with this and I need to stop having a diet of this. I think a major issue in America today is people don't turn anything off anymore. We're just so used to having everything on that we've gotten desensitized to the need of all things being made new. I think that's the plight of our teenagers today. So much information, and at that age with the immaturity, unable to turn it off. You might say, I'm not 16 anymore. You could be 46 or 76. We still got to turn things off that our minds are pure and holy unto God. It says in first, 2 Corinthians 5, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. The old's gone, the new has come. Jesus took on flesh and blood so that we could be different. Do you have joy in your heart today? The peace of God that passes understanding? I mean, let me just be very clear when it comes to this. You don't have to feel great every day, but the joy of the Lord is inside no matter how you feel. I mean, joy is a constant in a world that's always up and down. Have you noticed for the last, what, 10 days now, it's almost on every day on the news, Omicron, Omicron, right? Uh, there'll be other Greek letters coming down the line. Let me tell you right now, don't let Omicron steal your joy. Don't let high gas prices steal your joy. Don't let, the inability, don't let the ability to get something in online for Christmas steal your joy. Don't let losing your taste steal your joy. Here's what the Bible says. The joy of the Lord, what? 
is my strength. It's my strength. If you lose your joy, you also lose your desire to be sensitive to the things of God. Look at the third thing. To be spiritually sensitive, you must have a standard of truth. You know, if you're going to be sensitive, you've got to have a standard by which you know how to judge things. So we saw the first thing is I can't hold on to the things of my past. I need to embrace the new life. I can't mix them together like gumbo and carrot cake. But I need a standard of truth. Again, you go back a little bit in history. It's not far ago. When I was growing up, folks, there, were, there was men and women. Today, there's all kind of definitions for gender. When we were growing up, um, a man married a woman, a woman married a man. When I was growing up, if you stole a can of soft drink out of a store, they would arrest you. Today, you can steal a lot more. It's happening right now in America. By the way, when I was growing up, illegal aliens were still illegal. And you could just add on and on and on the number of things that have lost a definition of truth. Now, here's, here's what's so important about that. It's not that we're always calling out sin. Look, if there's no truth, there is no sin. It's either sinful or it's not sinful. It either draws me to God or it pulls me away from God. You can't have the cake and eat it too, as they used to say. A generation ago, most people believed in absolute truth. So today, the numbers show it through surveys. Less and less people believe in absolute truth. And what that means is this. Something is true. It's always true. It'll always be true. What happens if you have wiggly truth? You have nothing to depend on. Well, let's think about it. What if you have a contractor and he's building your house and he says, you know what, I'm going to go with this, um, this flexible ruler. Sometimes a, a foot's 13 inches and sometimes it's 11 inches. I, I just like the flexibility of it. It's, it's constantly changing because I can never mess up if I use a flexible ruler. You don't want that, do you? Do you want a flexible surgeon? That says, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to go by the book. I'm just going to kind of do it the way it feels. You want people to go by the book with the important things of your life. If somebody's dealing with your retirement account, do you want them to say, you know what, I don't go by the rules anymore. I just take a, a dart and throw it on the dartboard, and that's where I invest your money. You don't want that. You want somebody that's going by a standard of truth. Sin is always sinful. Righteousness is always righteous because God doesn't change. Jesus is the Messiah, and that is not negotiable. There's not a multitude of ways to get to heaven. There's one way to get to heaven. And that's why Christmas is so important. We're talking about this in Sunday school today. In Scripture, we see very little said about Jesus prior to him beginning his ministry at the time of his baptism. You have him in the temple at the age of 12. You have him at, at his birth in Matthew and Luke. You have him in the temple at the age like at the age of 12, and then you also have him prior to that uh, getting uh, to meet Simeon and Anna, you might remember, uh, when, he's, when he um, is eight days old. But other than that, we see very little about Jesus prior to his ministry. But the Bible is explicit. It is important how he came. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Because what came into the world? Truth came into the world. Look at verse 21. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. He is the definition, the embodiment of truth. That's why I'm a Christian. Because I know the truth and the truth sets me free. He alone is truth. You cannot follow Jesus who is the truth if you have a standard that's always changing. Think about that. If Jesus is the truth, is he always the truth? Does he ever change the truth? If he doesn't change the truth, then the truth around Jesus doesn't change. The truth of our world doesn't change. I like my coffee black. You know, got any black coffee drinkers out there? I, I drink it black. I like my coffee black. For about the last 15 years, I've drank my coffee black. Prior to that, there was a season where I drank my coffee with only powdered creamer. That went on for a few years. I'm not sure what made me transition. But when I was a child, my mom and dad were very strong coffee drinkers. Uh, they loved to drink it morning, afternoon, night. And I grew up on pet evaporated milk and two sugars in my coffee. 
Well, it was some sweet stuff. I can't even imagine that now. I, the tartness of black coffee versus the sweetness of that, I, I can't imagine. In fact, when Bobby was here, he used to put honey in his coffee. I, I can't imagine that that's sweet. But think about that. I drank black coffee. I drank it with creamer only. I drank it with pet milk and sugar. What's the right way to drink coffee? It doesn't matter. I know what some of you say, you know what the right way to drink coffee is? It's not to drink it at all. I hate this stuff. We got any non-coffee drinkers in here today? There's a few of you. You know, um, Tim Lee just started drinking coffee a year or two ago after all these years not drinking. So uh, Sarah drinks coffee. And we just got to get Andrew and the whole family will be coffee drinkers. But does it really matter? It doesn't matter if you drink it. It doesn't matter how you drink it. I looked this up online this week. Starbucks has around 80,000 different combinations of how you can drink coffee. Does it really matter which of those you choose? That means for the rest of your life, you can go to Starbucks every day and have a different coffee. It doesn't matter. But here's the distinction. Think about it. When it comes to your truth, you don't need 80 varieties of truth or 80,000 varieties of truth. You need one truth. So if you want to have all kinds of coffee, you go for it. But if you want all kinds of truth, you're lying to yourself. It says in Ephesians 1.13, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Paul also writes in Galatians 2, he says this twice, in verses 5 and 14 of that pas those passages, he calls it the truth of the gospel. The gospel is truth, Jesus is truth, and you've got to have truth to have a sensitivity to anything. Here's the real deal about sensitivity. If nothing is wrong, you don't have to be sensitive to anything. Insensitivity is normal when truth is flexible. Insensitivity is normal when truth is flexible. Let's talk about this for a minute. Is Jesus the only way to heaven? Yes or no? If Jesus is the only way to heaven, then the birth of Jesus at Christmas is very, very important. It totally matters that God became Emmanuel with us, took on flesh and blood. It matters. So as we celebrate Christmas this year, there's all kind of things that are coming at us through songs and stories and movies and traditions and exchanges and, and decorations. Listen, I have no problem with the, the shrimp boat and the alligators at the foot of the old bridge. I think that's cute and wonderful. But that's not Christmas, is it? I think that the visual display at Kemper Williams, it's, it's a wonderful thing. You want to ride through it. I think it's great for kids. I love seeing the lights. But that's not Christmas. All these ones, the lighthouse in Burbank. Isn't it beautiful the way they've got it decorated this year? But, but that's not Christmas. Listen, I can't have Christmas with those things alone, but I can have Christmas with Christ alone. Because He is the truth of Christmas. And if I allow myself to take all of the flavors and smells and make that Christmas and make it equal with Jesus then it's kind of like dipping your carrot cake in gumbo, Miss Lucy. You mean I, I can't have all that? Oh, you can have all the other, but let me tell you this. The flavor of right now is Jesus Christ alone. All this other is fluff and decoration. Jesus is everything. And we need to be sensitive to that. Look at the last thing. To be spiritually sensitive, you must work at it constantly. You want to be sensitive? You're going to have to work at it. Uh, I, don't, I don't have any major allergies that I know of, but Tim Lee's allergic to cats. Uh, I remember a number of years ago, we were um, traveling on our first trip to Iowa, and we stopped to see some people I had known growing up. And so we got to their house to visit, called them up. They said, come see us. So we went. She walks in the house. She goes, there's cats here. I said, how do you know? She said, I can feel it. I'm starting to itch. And so we're in the house, and uh, we're there a few minutes. She says, we have got to go. They invited us to spend the night. She said, we can't spend the night there. I'll be, I'll be breaking out. We can't do that. And so we, we stopped right after we left there. We went to a drugstore and got some Benadryl because she's allergic to cats. 
We went to uh, Nova Scotia a few years ago on one of our mission trips. We were going to stay at the pastor's house. And we got there and said, there's cats here. Can't stay here. Billy Joe, that's why you stayed there, because we couldn't stay because of cats. Can't get around the cats. So guess what? If you have cats, we're not coming to your house. Amen? Well, brother, I need to get some cats then. Amen? That's what I'm going to do. I need to get some cats, at least a stuffed cat. Um, but she doesn't have to work at being allergic to cats. You know, you don't have to work at being allergic to something. But you have to work at being sensitive spiritually. You hear what I'm saying? There's a distinction. Allergies to different food items. Um, we were talking about that earlier today, Tommy. Food items. Some, some food items can cause you to have a, a reaction. Uh, some of you have to have an EpiPen in case you get in the presence of some things because you have a, an allergic reaction. You don't cause that. You just possess that. But to be sensitive to God, you must work at noticing the things that take away from your sensitivity to God. Uh, let's look at what he says later on in Ephesians chapter 4. Therefore, he's dealing with sensitivity, and then he gets into specifics of things you've got to watch out for if you're going to stay sensitive. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must, not, must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling and slander along with every form of malice be kind and compassionate to one another forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you so let's look at where we've been and then I'm going to go down this list with you Paul says you're a new creature get rid of the old stuff embrace the newness of Christ he's the standard of truth and because you believe these three things I'm going to give you a list of things to always work on. You never arrive as a Christian until you get to heaven. These are things you need to work on. This is verses 25 to 32. Here's a list of things. Falsehood, don't be a liar. Anger, hold your temper back. Theft, if it's not yours, don't take it. Unwholesome talk, if you drop in them four letter words, you need to stop it. Bitterness. You get mad at people and hang on to it the rest of your life. Rage. Some of you have anger problems on Highway 90. Uh, brawling. Are you a fighter? Fighting with words, fighting with fists. Slander. Speaking ill of other people. Malice. Trying to hurt other people. But do you have kindness? He says you need to embrace kindness. Compassion. Forgiveness. Think of all these things. Be sensitive to these in your life. You see, the real key to following the Lord is knowing that I've always got to work at following the Lord. When I get saved, yes, my name's written in heaven. But as I walk on earth, I'm always battling the flavors around me, the sights around me, the sounds around me. I've got to be sensitive to all these things. You don't just get saved and arrive. How important is Jesus in Christmas for you? Are you sensitive to that? Listen to this, very important. If over the next three weeks, someone were to follow you and not say a word to you, they just had a, a notepad and a pencil, and they watched and looked and recorded how much Jesus is in your Christmas, what would they find? Are you sensitive to the fact that this is all about him? Or would somebody conclude, even if they didn't know you, total strangers following you for the next three weeks, would they say they got the lights, the sounds, the decorations, they play the Bing Crosby all day long. Oh, I'm telling you, their yard looks great. Oh, they wear a lot of red. Man, they sure do that really nice. They go to all the parties. But for three weeks, I didn't hear Jesus much in their celebration of Christmas. That would say something about the fact that you've lost spiritual sensitivity 
in a time when it should all be about him. A Christless Christmas is no Christmas at all. Christians, we need to be sensitive to the day in which we live in. It's a tough time. I, you know, if, if you watch the news reports, we got everything from the, the school shooting in Michigan to the parade violence in, in Wisconsin and all this stuff. Let me tell you right now, you know what, you, listen, what does all that say to us? Those doing the deeds are insensitive to their hearts or they wouldn't do it. And if you're not right with Christ, you can grow just as desensitized. Search your heart today and make sure that it's sensitive to Jesus. Let's stand together as Tyler comes. Paul, would you join me at the front? So what is my invitation to you? This